The LU solution method is a numerical method that involves the decomposition of a matrix A into a product of lower and upper triangular matrices. And this effectively simplifies the solution of a linear system AX equals B by allowing us to solve linear systems involving triangular matrices. So suppose this system has R equations and R unknowns. We decompose A into lower and upper triangular matrices. So we end up with the following system. And letting UX equal Y, where Y is an R by 1 vector, we can substitute for UX so we end up with Ly equals B. And then we solve this linear system for Y. And then we can substitute Y into here and solve for X. So that's the main advantage, is that we solve these linear systems that involve triangular matrices. An LU decomposition of a square matrix A can be found by reducing A into row echelon form using Gaussian elimination with elementary row operations as we've seen. And we assume this is done with no row interchanges. So therefore A has an LU decomposition that may not be unique. So recall reducing A to our echelon form means that we obtain an upper triangular matrix by multiplying A by elementary matrices E1, then E2, and so on up to ER. And given that elementary matrices are invertible, then we can get A back by multiplying u by the inverse of er and so on then by the inverse of e2 and by the inverse of e1 so that gives back a and therefore this matrix here is our lower triangular matrix so let's find this lu decomposition by reducing A to our echelon form. So let's track our computations by writing A over here. And I'm going to copy this again and put it here. So our first elementary row operation involves subtracting 4 by row 1 from row 2. So we start with an identity matrix. And because we want to zero out this entry in row 2, then we replace this entry with minus 4. So I have minus 4 by 1, plus 4 by 1 is 0, plus 0 by 1 is 0. So this entry becomes 0. Then we have minus 4 by 2 is minus 8, plus 3 is minus 5. And minus 4 by 3 is negative 12, plus 2 by 1, which is negative 10. And now we want to zero out this entry. So our next elementary matrix is going to be for row 3, minus 1 by row 1. So what we have is minus 1 by 1, plus 1 by 1. So this entry is 0, and the entries on a diagonal remain as 1, and the rest of the entries are 0. 
So that gives minus 1 by 1, plus 0 by 0, plus 1 by 1 is 0. And minus 1 by 2, plus 0 by minus 5, plus 1 by minus 2. So that gives minus 4. And then we have minus 3 by 1, plus 4, is 1. And the next matrix is going to make this entry a leading 1. So we're just going to multiply this by minus 1 on 5. And then the 1's remain on the diagonal. And we have zeros everywhere else. So here we have row 2 by column 2. So 0 by 2 is 0. Minus a fifth by minus 5 is 1. Plus 0 by minus 4 which is 0. So we get 1 on a diagonal. And then we have 0 by 3. Minus a fifth by minus 10, which is 2, plus 0 is 2. And next, we want to zero out this entry. So we add 4 by row 2 to row 3. So that's our next elementary matrix. So we have 0 by 2, plus 1 by 4. Minus 4 by 1. And the rest of the entries of the identity matrix remain the same. So 0 by 2, plus 4 by 1, minus 4 by 1, gives 0. And 0 by 3, plus 4 by 2 is 8, plus 1 by 1, gives a 9 for this entry. And finally, we want to make this a leading 1. So our next matrix is going to have 1 on 9 as this entry. And the rest of the identity matrix remains the same. So multiplying this matrix by this matrix is going to replace 9 with 1 and keep all the other entries the same. And according to this equation, multiplying the inverses of these elementary matrices, starting with E1, so we have E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5, will give our lower triangular matrix. So fortunately, the inverses of these matrices are easy to obtain, and we can find a more systematic method to construct L without having to find the inverses and multiply them together. So we just need to track these multipliers that we used to reduce the matrix A to row echelon form. So the inverse of E1 is the matrix with minus 4 negated. So at the same entry, we put a 4. And the inverse of this matrix is the matrix with minus 1 replaced with 1. So we put a 1 here. And the inverse of this third matrix involves taking the reciprocal of minus a fifth. So that would give minus 5. And the inverse of this matrix involves negating 4. So we get minus 4 here. And the inverse of this matrix involves taking the reciprocal of 1 on 9, which is 9. 
So given our matrix is lower triangular, we have 1 here, because in this case this entry was 1, but if it wasn't 1, we would have had an elementary matrix to turn this into a 1. And the remaining entries above the diagonal are 0 for a lower triangular matrix. So as we can see, we built this matrix without having to multiply these matrices by A, and we only track these multipliers. And we can see the upper triangular matrix is our matrix A reduced to right echelon form. And if you multiply these together, you'll be able to verify that A is equal to LU. Let's do a simplified LU decomposition of A without constructing the elementary matrices to reduce A to right echelon form. So let's write A over here, which we're going to reduce, while constructing the matrix L alongside it. So first, above the diagonal, we have zeros, because it's a lower triangular matrix that we're finding. And in the first step, we're reducing this entry to 1. So 1 multiplied by 1 is 1, so that remains the same. And we're reducing this next entry to 0. So we're subtracting 4 by row 1 from row 2. So our multiplier is minus 4. But recall that we took the inverse of the elementary matrix, and therefore we just negate this. So whenever we zero out an entry, we negate the multiplier that achieved this. So here we end up with 4, minus 4 by 1, which is 0, and 3 minus 4 by 2 is negative 5, and 2 minus 4 by 3 is negative 10. Now next, we want to put a leading 1 in row 2. So our multiplier here is minus a fifth. So when we reduce an entry to 1, we take the reciprocal. So remember that when inverting our elementary matrix, we ended up with minus 5. So that gives 1, and minus 10 by minus a fifth gives 2. So what we have is reducing an entry to 0. We negate the multiplier. And reducing an entry to 1. we take the reciprocal of the multiplier. So next, we want to reduce the 1 to a 0. So we subtract 1 by row 1. So our multiplier is negative 1. And we're reducing the entry to a 0. So we negate this. So what we have is 0 minus 2, minus 1 by 2, is minus 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. And now we want to add 4 by row 2 to row 3, to reduce this to 0. So because our multiplier is 4, and we're reducing the entry to a 0, we negate it. So that gives 0 here, and 1 plus 4 by 2 gives 9. And we multiply this entry by 1 on 9 to reduce it to a 1. So therefore, we take the reciprocal of the multiplier. 
and this gets reduced to 1. So as we can see, we have turned our lower triangular matrix by tracking the multipliers and using these rules. And the reduced matrix to row echelon form is our upper triangular matrix. As we can see, our LU decomposition or factorization of the matrix A results in asymmetry. With a lower triangular matrix, it doesn't need to have ones on a diagonal. So what we can do is divide the entries in each column by the entries on a diagonal to factorize the L matrix where we place a diagonal entries in a diagonal matrix. So these entries will remain 0. And here we have 1, 4 on 1, and 1 on 1. And this entry will be 1, so we have minus 5 on minus 5. And this entry will be minus 4 on minus 5. And then this entry will be 1. So we divided the entries in each column by the diagonal entry in that column. So we end up with the following diagonal matrix. So therefore we have L is equal to some matrix L dash by a diagonal matrix. So our decomposition of A becomes L dash by D by U. And we generally call this an LDU decomposition or factorization. So you can verify that multiplying L dash by D by U results in A. So note that LU decompositions are not unique because this could have been our matrix L. And we can multiply D by U which will give another upper triangular matrix. So an LU decomposition is not unique, whereas an LDU decomposition is unique. And in both cases, we assume that we didn't do any row interchanges when reducing A to row echelon form.